All right, this is Lisa. Say hi, Lisa. Good morning. All right, Lisa. Thanks for coming. Thanks for being willing Thank to share. Thank you. <laughs> well, we, we got to chat a little bit before as well, and you mentioned some specific things that you felt like as we were heading into the prayer and fasting that you were like, I, I really feel like the Lord's telling me to do this and that and some specific things that I need to work through and maybe to work out. And, um, and so you, you prayed about those things. And so um, I thought that was a great story and I wanted you to share with us as well. And so um, just take a minute and share with us what the Lord's been doing in you during this season and just kind of how you've worked your way through the 21 days. Okay. Um, like you've heard from several people this morning, there's, we all have a backstory and my husband and I moved here to Cheney in 2020 during COVID and it was not an easy time to move somewhere new. It was very difficult. Um, and I did not make many connections other than our next door neighbors. And I had come from a place where I lived almost my entire life. And so my family was there, my friends were there, my church family, my horse community, um, my whole life and we did this for my husband and for his dreams and for that I still am thankful and grateful that I have him and we can do this for him but it doesn't make it any easier for me so coming during that time um, cheney has been really hard for me the weather um, I've I had a I broke my foot as soon as I got here um, we had to put down one of my horses I've had a kidney stone um, I lost why well, I left my job um, in a profession that I had for 17 years it has just been extremely difficult, and I had no roots. I had n no one to turn to, and it's been a dark time for me. And I'm a person of joy and a person that um, came from a place where I don't, um, not, I don't have rose-colored glasses or whatever. I had a lot of ups and downs, and we, ha we had a lot of trials in the Tri-Cities as well. But um, when I came to Cheney, they were just hard and fast, and I didn't have resources, and I do have a great family still. They are two and a half to three hours away, and they're, they're available um, digitally, <laughs> and it's not the same. Um, so a year ago, we started here at Cheney Faith Center, and the question was, uh, do you trust God, right? Mm -hmm. yep. And I, I was so mad. I was <laughs> like, yeah, I trust you, and look at what's happening to me. I just, like, my life is in the tanks. And Jason's is great, by the way. His, he loves it here. His life is wonderful, and mine is unraveling. And... Um, <laughs> So I, I was miserable, and I, I found a different job that I learned a lot from, and I, and I was still trying to grow, and I, was, and I was still faithful, and I have a wonderful family, and so I have a lot of milestone moments in the last couple years. I've become a grandmother. My daughter got married. It's not that life hasn't gone on, but personally for me, I was in the darkest place I've ever been, and so um, I did the prayer and fasting last year very bitterly. I did not grow. I gave up social media. I don't even remember anything from it, to be totally honest. It just, I went through it. So when it came up this year, um, out of peer pressure, <laughs> I, I was like, okay, well, the church is doing it, I'll do it again. And then my daughter, who is just a delightful little um, baby Christian, but who is so much further in her faith than I am, and who's married an amazing man who's so faithful, said, Mom, when you go to that church, you need to introduce yourself to one woman every week. I'm like, darn you, Grace. <laughs> um, but she also has to do the same thing. And it's been harder for her because she has an infant. Yeah. And so she's not. she spends a lot of time in the cry room. So she doesn't get to do that as much at her church. But I have met so many people here. Um, I have met so many women now and men as well. I, I now know um, probably 10 or 15 people in this room right now, um, thanks to my daughter's challenge. And so when the, the fasting came up, I was thinking, what do I need to fast? And in all reality, along with all of my trials, I also had some health issues. And now that it's beginning to be in the rear view, it makes a lot of sense that I would have health issues because when you're not mm -hmm. doing well, your body breaks down. Um, and I got super addicted to like carby foods. Like if it was white and carby, I loved it. And I ate more Pringles in the last year than I've eaten my whole life. <laughs> I'll actually stop at a gas station to get Pringles. And my daughter and husband can tell you that. <laughs> so I decided I would give up carbs. I would introduce myself to one woman every week at church. or And sometimes they introduce themselves to me, and that still counts in my eyes. And then um, 
I bought, instead of doing the church um, devotional, or the devotional they put out, I right. found one on joy because I felt that was very appropriate for me. So when I started this year, I started with a more open heart and an open mind, and I will not say I ever lost my faith, and I never questioned my faith, but I did just keep questioning, why is it so hard for me? Where is my joy? Where did it go? And I cried at my job when I moved here. I cried at home a lot. Um, Jason even said, do you want to just give up and go back? And I told him, you can never go back. That's not how life works. You can't go back. We sold our house. My job is gone. Some of my friends have moved on. Our daughter got married. Like Life isn't like that. I understand that. And I don't want to give up. But I have to find strength. So I got this devotional. And I started it. And I'm a teacher, by the way. And so I'm super like, logical. And one of the very first devotionals was about um, all about how you learn. And it was about um, building neural pathways. And the author wrote that studies show that doing something repeatedly forms neural pathways in the brain. The more we do it, the stronger and deeper those neural pathways become. It's like a new flow of water finding a path over the land, which then becomes a little rut, which eventually becomes a gully. Absent an interruption, that path becomes the default course. And it clicked for me that prayer and fasting is building new neural pathways. Mm -hmm. And scientists know that now, and God's known that since he created us. Yeah. And in biblical times when they were fasting, they didn't know they were building new neural pathways. But God knew that I needed to know that. <laughs> and he knew that I needed to know that there was a reason that prayer and fasting would help me develop new neural pathways. And gratitude can be developed in a neural pathway. That's and right. one way to finding joy is through gratitude. Mm -hmm. So that was like day two of my devotion. So I'm like, okay, that makes sense. It's a good reason. It's worth giving this up. And then a few days later, there was another one called Be a Pollyanna. And I've heard that phrase, but I didn't know what it meant. And actually, a woman used it yesterday. I heard her saying it, and I was like, oh, now I know what that means. So apparently there was a movie, if you don't know what it means. There was a movie about, and a book, about a woman who was overly joyful about everything because her father was a pastor. And being a Pollyanna means that you're super thankful for things even when it doesn't seem there would be a reason. Well, on the very night before I had this devotion, Jason and I were talking one more time because we're gonna build our house. We decided it's time to build our house um, here in Cheney and we're, things have settled enough. And we just looked one more time and said, is this where we want to be? My job is a 45 minute commute. Do we want to look anywhere else? And, and I had this devotional and I went back to him and I said, you know what? I learned in my devotional. I had a very short commute to a job that I hated. And now I have a long commute to a job that I love this year. So I got a job that I love this year and it's a 45 minute commute. But I talked to my mom on the phone once a week. I talked to my daughter. I listened to books. and. You know what? It's not that bad. I, I can live with it. It's not that bad. And so we decided we're going to build our house here. It's going to be OK. And then the other morning, it was really funny because Jason's pretty sassy, and you might not know him. But um, it was yesterday morning. It was um, The weather was really bad, and I had a drive to go to an event I was going to go to. And he said, oh, no, this was Friday, actually. The weather was bad then as well. And I had to drive to work. And he said, well, I wonder what your devotion is going to say about that. And so I got up, <laughs> and I read my devotion. And the devotion said, the, the Bible verse is Psalm 23, and it said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me be beside still waters. He restores my soul. And it was all about money, time, and fortitude. And, he, and the, um, the author talked about a, a movie where they show the actual um, hills in Ireland, or not Ireland, excuse me, Israel, and how rocky and dusty they are and how what they considered green pastures is nothing like what we would consider green pastures and how if they had just enough food for their livestock, they could feed them and then keep moving on to feed them and that was considered plenty for them and how we consider an overabundance would be green pastures. And the really funny thing was he and I had our meeting with our financial advisor that afternoon. And I said, my devotional wasn't about my trip to work. It was about our meeting with our financial advisor. And even though I lost my job and have a much lower paying job that I love, 
it's going to be okay because it's not about having an overabundance. It's about having enough. And we have enough. And so through this devotional, um, it's not about finding the perfect devotional or whatever. It's about seeing that the Lord is ever present and, and being aware and being open to that and, and looking for those moments because he's always there. He was there the whole time. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't see him, and I probably was bitter, although I'm not really ready to admit that yet. But um, <laughs> trying to put things in the rear view and just see that it's okay, and I'm going forward, and God's going with me, and this year I will learn what I truly believe because I'm, I'm here now. And, and through the prayer and fasting, um, the fasting has been really, really hard, <laughs> really hard, and it's given me a lot of time to refocus my thought and back on, on Jesus and, and back on the prayer that the women's group is doing and, and just to, to rededicate myself. Um, and then another thing that I have is I have a new horse and I went to a group uh, yesterday that I had never met. It was an equestrian group and they actually had a um, verse about community and their theme is, um, Sorry, I have sticky notes everywhere. I'm a teacher. I think I told you that. Um, their theme is God, others, ourselves, and the horse. And it's about you. Th they said there's only one truth, and it's the Bible. And no matter whether you're working with people or your horse, it always comes down to that truth. And so you can't believe the lies that the world is telling you. You can't believe the lies that you're hearing in your head about yourself. And I can't believe the lies of disappointment and bitterness that I'm telling myself. There is hope. There is joy. And I have to choose that. And I have to rebuild these neural pathways. And the verse was about the, the part that they chose was just part of um, Philippians 2, 4. But, it's all, but it was just about we make, we provide joy for God. We make joy for our community. Our life is complete when we engage in our community, when we share God with our community, when we share God with our animals and joy with our animals, and when we bring all that back, and then when we share our story, we can provide that to other people, and that makes the joy complete. And that's our, we're called to do that. We have to do that. And if we're not engaging with God and we're not finding the joy, we're depriving ourselves and we're also depriving other people. Amen. That's good. Well, thank you, Lisa. One of the things I love about that is um, not only did you, the Lord, work some things in and out of you and help you find joy, but he also fulfilled the desire of your heart, mm -hmm. which was to hang out with some people that love horses. Yeah, and one of the ladies that I, she goes to the other service, but one of the ladies that I introduced <clears throat> myself to is part of the horse community in Cheney, and she's connecting me to the horse community here in Cheney, which is something in almost three years I never was successful in doing myself. And the Lord did that for you while you the prayed Lord. and fasted. Right here, yep. Right here. Yep, right right here, 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 right here in church. Right here in this church. That's good. That's good. Well, that is so good, and I love what you shared because there are times where we can end up in the dumps, and it's moments like this where I love that. How many of you love that God's created a neural pathway? Like, I need to hear that too, right? God needs to create a new neural pathway in me to help me hear him, to help me see him, and to, to work out those things in and out of us. So can we thank Lisa for sharing?